Hello, I'm Mr. Lee, um, and I will be reading chapter 15 of Life According to Og the Frog. So chapter 15, decision time. Plop, 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 plop. It's raining. Plop, 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 plop. Squeak, squeak, squeak. I'm in my cozy tank in room 26, and I'm here because I'm a classroom pet who helps my friends just like Humphrey. I can float, doze, be, and I only get wet when I want to because I'm here to stay. Too bad it's just a daydream. The sound of the raindrops on the windows of room 26 usually calms me, but since this is the day the class is voting on my future, I'm not a bit relaxed and neither are the big tads. Humphrey's been spinning his wheel non-stop. The poor guy will be exhausted. And all of the big tads are restless too. It's time to count the votes, but Mrs. Brisbane is waiting for one person to arrive. One person? Is it Brett? Is it Dr. Okeke? Nope. But it's someone very important. Mr. Morales. The principal. This time, he's wearing a tie with little frogs all over it. They look a lot like me. I decided to have someone from outside room 26 tally up the votes, Miss Brisbane tells the class. Before he begins, Mr. Morales says, Mrs. Brisbane told me you all put a lot of thought into your votes. So now, We'll find out the final decision. Final decision? Go or stay. We love you or we don't. You're in or you're out. This is no in between. But at least I know what I'm hoping for. I hope the vote is for me to stay because Humphrey and the Big Tads had taught me what a good classroom pet should do. And if I stay, I vow to be the best classroom pet I can possibly be. Cross my toes. Of course, if I have to go to Piney Woods, I will still float, doze, be. But in room 26, I've learned that there's a lot more to life than sitting on a lily pad. I've learned that a little critter can make a big difference to humans. Humphrey has done that, and I want to do that too. The room is very quiet as Mr. Morales reaches into the box and reads the first vote. Piney Woods. My heart sinks down to the tips of my webbed feet. But the next vote is room 26. Then there's another. My mind races as he reads votes off one by one. In the end, there are two votes for Piney Woods. The rest are all for me to stay in room 26. I guess that's a clear choice, Mr. Morales says. Og will remain as your class room pet. Then there's cheers and more cheers, and I'm cheering too. Even Heidi and Garth join in, and I hear some very lively squeaking as well. Thank you, Humphrey. Despite all the cheering, Miss Brisbane has a worried look on her face. But I'm concerned because I think there were more votes than there were students. Mr. Morales does a quick recount and Miss Brisbane is right. We have an extra vote. I think it might be this one. She holds up a thin strip of paper that is much smaller than the others. The writing is small and I can hardly read it, but it does say room 26. Whew, that's a relief because if Humphrey didn't want me to stay, our lives as neighbors might be difficult. She looks around the classroom. Who is this vote? No one raises their hands or answers. If someone tried to vote twice, I'd like to know about it. Studying the Big Tad's faces for a sign. They all look so innocent because they are innocent. And Humphrey doesn't squeak up because he didn't vote twice. <sighs> Miss Brigbrain, I hope everyone 
This paper, I hope whoever this paper belongs to will let me know privately. Meanwhile, even without this vote, Og will stay. And then the cheers become deafening. Bing, bang, boing. My heart is hopping around. This is what I wanted all along, and I just didn't know it. Even with all the noise, I can hear a small, shrill voice. Squeak, 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 squeak. Thank you, Humphrey, I tell him. Your vote counts with me. I think that we'll be going back to normal routine in room 26, but I am all wrong. A few days after the vote, Miss Brisbane makes an announcement. Dr. Okeke has invited us to participate in this spring's wildlife fair at Piney Woods, but we have a lot of work to do to get ready. But you said it's not until spring, God says. Yes, says Miss Brigbrain. And the first day of spring is just a little over a month away. And what a month it is. In addition to their usual lessons, my friends made posters for our big display at the fair. God spends a lot of time recording me and I am happy to sing all of my favorite songs. But when he makes them up on the tape, when he mixed them up on the tape, they don't sound quite as good as they do in the swamp. Heidi and Gail make up a dance called the frog hop and teach it to all the big tads. It's fun to watch Tabitha hop alongside. Saye and Seth, Tabitha's giggling even louder than Gail. That will attract people to our display, Heidi explains. I hope it doesn't drive them away, Richie mutters. Miss Brigbrain likes to dance, but I think we also need to tell people why frogs are threatened and what they can do to help. So my friends get busy making posters and they show them to me. AJ draws a drawing of a beautiful pond with people picking up trash around it. It says, keep our rivers and streams clean across the top. Garth draws some bottles with scary labels and puts X's through them. It, he writes, keep chemicals out of our water. Mandy's poster has a big factory pumping out black smoke with don't pollute in huge letters. And Saez looks just like Mackenzie's Marsh with drawings all of the animals who live there. It says, protect our marsh. Thank you, friends, I tell them. Hearing all of them, hearing all of those problems makes me glad. I live in a nice clean tank in room 26. We can take Og to the fair, can't we? Tabitha asked one day. Mrs. Brigsbane thinks that's a wonderful idea, and so do I. What about Humphrey? AJ asks. He's wildlife too. Gail giggles. I've never saw a hamster in the woods. AJ shrugs. Maybe, but hamsters must live in the wild somewhere. Mrs. Brigsbane says he has a point. I will call Dr. Okeke and see if we can take both. And that's how Humphrey and I ended up at Piney Woods Wildlife Fair a few weeks later. There's plenty of wildlife there, from eagles to somebody walking around in a bear suit. It looks like any bear, it doesn't look like any bear I've seen. The wildest wildlife of all the humans. The frog hop does attract a lot of people to display to the display table where folks of all ages show up to admire Humphrey and me. And that gives the big tad a chance to look about how frogs are disappearing. That's terrible news. But the kids are excited to tell people how they can take action and help protect the frogs who are left and all the other animals too. I even know some of the humans who are, who arrived. There are some parents, of course, Aldo comes to with his nice wife, Maria. She tells me I'm the cutest frog she's ever seen. I'm thinking I'm making quite a splash. And I'm thrilled when Principal Morales stops, with, stops by with his children. Og is a very important addition to the Longfellow School, he tells them, just like Humphrey. Now, that makes me want to jump for joy. All in all, Piney Woods is a pretty nice place. I probably would like it there. I wouldn't have to spend my days on the lookout for enemies like Chopper and searching for food, but I wouldn't have my swamp friends to play with 
I also wouldn't have big tads to look after and I wouldn't have real problems to solve. I wouldn't have a job and I wouldn't have a friend named Humphrey. And so I'm glad it's settled. I'm the second classroom pet of room 26. The first classroom pet is a tough act to follow, but I'll give it a try. I still think of my friends in the swamp, of course, but it's just like the song Miss Spriggs Brighton sings. I've made new silver friends, but I haven't forgotten the old ones. The gold ones, I've even wrote a poem about it, just like my friends did, for the poetry festival. And it goes like this. To my friends in the swamp far away, I wish you could hear what I have to say. From our first days as tads on those green lily pads, you are very special to me. We had good days and bad days to the weather, and we always did it together. We were friends, good and true, and I'm telling you. You are very special to me. We all had a ball, but times change all. And I didn't know that I had to go. We're apart, but I still think of you. There are new things that I've got to do. But the memories stay into this very day. You are very special to me. You'll always be special to me. It's a good poem, I think. And now it's time to float, doze, B. Thanks for listening to Life According to Og the Frog. Hope you enjoyed.